In this video, we're going to have a look at some of the new features that came out as part of Power BI's November 2025 update. We're also going to cover the October 2025 update, which I have missed from the previous month. So without further ado, let's jump in. So let's start with the features from the October 2025 update. Copilot to write DAX queries in the DAX query view is now generally available. The Copilot feature makes writing DAX easier because it lets you just ask your questions in a natural language. I don't personally use Copilot much with Power BI, but if you do use it, this is a good opportunity to do so because this feature is now in general availability. Another feature that went into general availability, button slicers. Going into GA, it's come with some new features. So first is this cross highlighting feature, which lets you dim any other slicer buttons in your list except the one that is currently selected. To do this, you simply need to drag the field that you want to highlight on the highlight label field well and watch how the options or the other options get dimmed. A new auto grid option is now available in the format settings for the button slicer, but you'll also see it in the other visuals as well. This is basically dynamic resizing of your elements based on the size of the visual. There's a new resize behavior for tables, which works similarly to auto grid. So when you toggle this, it will automatically distribute and resize your column widths to span the whole width of the visual. So in the past, I'd personally turn off the auto size width settings with my tables because I like to have more of a granular control over the size of my columns. That's because I'm trying to avoid this dreaded horizontal scroll bars every time I create or add new data on my tables. But now with this feature, theoretically, the column size should just adjust and fit itself in the visual accordingly based on how many columns there are in that table. A new add-in in PowerPoint, the Power BI controller, allows you to centrally control all your embedded Power BI visuals or report pages inside your PowerPoint slides. So if you've ever used storytelling with PowerPoint before, you'd know that embedding multiple visuals in multiple slides means that if you want to refresh all of them or snapshot any of them, you'll need to do them individually per slide and per embedded visual. But now with this new add-in, you can have a central place to control all of them in one go, saving you a lot of time uh, when it comes to managing your PowerPoint slides with Power BI visuals. You can find it in the add-ins portion of PowerPoint, and it is currently in preview, so I suggest you test it out first, but just be aware of using it when you want to use it with your production slides. A new option in the Power Query Editor export query results is now available in Power BI Desktop. You'll see this option available from the home ribbon when you open up Power Query Editor. And this basically lets you export query results from Power BI Desktop directly into your online destinations like Azure SQL or Lake Houses. This feature makes it easier for you to move your data into a secure, centralized place without really needing to use any other third-party methods. And that's really it for all of the features that I found interesting in the October feature updates. So let's quickly move on to the November update. The standalone Copilot will now be available in the mobile experience, making it even easier to ask questions about your data. Like the desktop experience, you can ask your questions in your natural language, generate a response, usually with a visual, you can look at its citations to see how the Copilot generated its results. And you can even dictate your questions similar to kind of ChatGPT, but it's only available for the iOS versions. The standalone Copilot responses have also been updated this month. So when you ask a question and more context is needed, instead of giving you a bunch of options to choose from, it either tries to look for the strongest candidate for what the question or what the answer you're looking for, and it can also ask for clarifications, which can help you get a better result. The grow to fit option with the tables have now also been added for the matrix visuals. So columns should now dynamically adjust their widths based on the size of the visual. The new card visual also went into general availability this month. This move added a bunch of customization options and updated some formatting controls like updated render behaviors, more styling controls, 
and updated default styles. This update does force you to follow the new styling and rendering behaviors, which unfortunately means that it broke a lot of people's reports like mine, which uh, previously relied on how the original behavior worked. The image visual has also been updated. So you can do more things like customizing images based on interaction states, more formatting options on things like background colors, borders, and shapes, and more image source options like uploading your image from a URL or from a data field. There's a new thing now called the App Copilot, which is basically a standalone Copilot experience, but within the scope of an org app. This means that you can ask questions about all the reports within that app in the scope of that app. This feature is currently in preview. However, I noticed that it did turn on by default uh, quite a while ago. And fortunately, you can choose to turn it off from the org app settings if you don't use Copilot at all, or your data is not yet prepped for AI. The MCP model context protocol is now available in preview. This basically allows you to use AI apps like Claude or ChatGPT to connect to your local files, data sources, or in our case, our Power BI semantic models. This is potentially a game changer as a developer since uh, this means that you can leverage AI to help you with some of the bulky things that you'd normally do in a Power BI report development, like you know, writing DAX codes, building semantic models, or even creating bulk documentation. And all of this just by prompting what you want in natural language. I'll have a look at covering this feature in one of my next videos just to explore what kind of things you can do with it and how much it will impact or change the landscape when it comes to developing reports in Power BI. The semantic model version history is now in general availability. This feature is something that they released a few months back and it's basically a feature in Power BI service that automatically stores up to five versions of your semantic model as you update them. So basically, if you ever made a mistake and wanted to revert to a previous version of your semantic model, you should really be using a GitHub repository for this. But if you're not, this feature could be a lifesaver for you. The TMDL extension on Visual Studio Code is now in GA as well. This is a feature that lets you programmatically work on your semantic models outside of Power BI. And that's really it for all the updates across October and November. So as usual, I didn't cover everything that was part of those month's updates, only the ones that were pretty interesting to me. So if you want to read more about any of the other features that I missed out, I'll leave a link to both of the month's updates in the description box below.